Themes and concepts of biology. We're going to start the discussion of biology by asking, what is life? Why are we asking that? Because biology is the study of living things. So how do scientists define life in biology? There are a number of criteria that scientists have established that an organism needs to meet in order to be considered living. So let's see what those are. All living things have order in their structure. They're not, they don't have random structures or some sort of order in them. So you can see this frog, there is a kind of a symmetric uh, axis of symmetry in here. There's two eyes, one on each side. There have, it has legs and hands uh, on both sides. It's pretty symmetric and there's a lot of order and structure in it. And um, all living things share that property. All uh, living organisms are sensitive and respond to stimuli. Now, the reason I'm showing this plant is that when they are touched, they respond to touch and shrivel. You can see that the leaf folds on itself when it is touched. So the plant is responding to its environment. All living things have that property. All living things reproduce, just like this horse and its baby. All living things uh, are born in a maybe more immature and smaller section, and that applies to individual cells too, and over time they grow and develop and become mature. So these kitty cats are born and then they are going to um, develop and grow into big cats. All living organisms um, undergo evolutionary adaptation. This is a case of hummingbirds, hummingbird in the Amazon jungle and the, these two different types of hummingbirds have adapted to eating uh, food in different parts of the jungle. So the hummingbird with the long beak um, takes advantage of its long beak to have an exclusive access to type of plants that and flowers that have a long tube, whereas the other hummingbird does not have the, this privilege. So this long beak is considered to be an evolutionary adaptation, uh, set, which um, is a result of providing a survival and reproduction advantage for these hummingbirds with the long beaks because it gives them an advantage because they have access to food that nobody else can access. Uh, all living organisms can regulate and maintain their internal environment, which we call homeostasis. So this bear, even though it lives in really cold conditions, it can hold its inside temperature at uh, 37 degrees Celsius. All living organisms can and consume and process energy. So this hawk is uh, hunting for food. It's going to eat its food, process it, and it's going to fund uh, its energy to fly. Now here's a question for you to consider. It talks about viruses and gives you some information about these viruses and it uh, is asking you a question. So attempt to answer this quiz and come to our discussion and see if you got the answer correctly. And so is this one. So you have access to these slides on Canvas. You can open them and uh, look at them independently. You don't have to depend on this video. Okay, so life has a hierarchy of organization which can go from very simple to complex. And one very interesting property of life that scientists have observed is that as you go from levels of simpler to more complex organization, at each level new properties emerge which is a concept called emergent properties. In everyday language, we refer to this as a concept of the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So you have 
uh, two simpler systems or tools or whatever you can think of. But when you put them together, all of a sudden a new property emerges. And a common example of this is for a bicycle. So a bicycle has seats, it has wheels, um, and all sorts of different parts, but you cannot really ride the, the seat or the handle or the tire individually. Uh, individually, they're not a mode of transportation, but when you put them all together, all of a sudden a new property emerges. Now you have a bike which you can use for transportation. That's the concept of emergent properties. So let's see how does that look in life, in science. So um, the smallest uh, part of life that we're going to look at, that smallest thing that makes life possible we're going to look at in this course is the atom. Of course, atom by itself is not a living thing, but, but living things are made of atoms. So it, the atoms are the basic unit of matter. Everything is made of atoms. If you put atoms together, all of a sudden you get a molecule. This is molecule looking at is phospholipid. You're going to see phospholipids quite a lot during uh, this course. So all of a sudden, when you take these individual atoms, put them together, you form a phospholipid and you get the ability to form a barrier around the, the cells. Then you have multiple cells and you add them together, you get um, then you have multiple uh, molecules, organize them together, and you create an, an, an organelle emer emerges that has properties which the molecule on its own did not have. We're going to be introduced to uh, organelles that are sitting inside the cells and produce all sorts of imp interesting functions when we discuss uh, cell components. In this case, we're looking at a Golgi apparatus and a nucleus, to both of which you are going to be introduced. Then you put all those organelles together and you put a boundary around them. All of a sudden, you get a cell. And now we're looking at the basic unit of life. The basic unit of life is a cell. And we're looking at a human blood cell. So these organelles individually on their own, they would not be able to carry oxygen in our veins, but you put them together in proper proportions, put a boundary around them, and then all of a sudden you have something, a human cell, that can carry oxygen. Then you put cells together, you, um, uh, you can, uh, putting together specialized cells generates an organ, so let's say your stomach is an organ and then you put all sorts of different organs together, you get an organ system. So in this case, we're looking at the digestive system and then the digestive system is made of different individual organs. And each of these individual organs on their own cannot um, in isolation support our life. Um, they do their thing under individual self, but it's only when you um, put them together, we can use them as a digestive system through which we can uh, chew, eat, absorb material, and then get rid of the extra stuff we don't want. So then uh, we're going to look at an individual organism. So each of us is an considered an individual organism. And when you get a whole bunch of us together, um, we're all, let's say, humans, That's that makes a human population. So a population is a group of organisms that are from the same species. If you get the same species of, uh, let's say, horses together, that's a population of horses. If you get the same species of frog together, that's a frog population, so on and so forth. Now, in nature, populations don't survive uh, individually in isolation. We all depend on each other. All organisms depend on each other. So the way organisms interact uh, with when they interact with one another, that's called a community. So in this park that you're looking at, um, the community 
the community in this park is the green grass and the trees that you see there and the animal life that is in there and the humans that are in there. So we are all part of this uh, community, different populations interacting with one another. An ecosystem is a place where it's a combination of all living things and the non-living components in that area that support them. So when you, for example, look at this park, uh, the grass, the animals, insects, and the human beings, and the tree, these are all living things. They're non-living things that support these. Um, this community uh, is air, water, sunlight. These are all non-living things. So when you put all of these together, you have an ecosystem. And then when you put all ecosystems together, you have what we call the biosphere, which is the entire Earth. So here's a question for you to ponder. Basically, the question is asking you to match an item, ecosystem, population, or community, which is labeled by a letter to uh, the list that you see down here, which are indicated by numbers. So match a letter with a number. Now, in life, there's an incredible amount of diversity, and it can be kind of overwhelming to study all these living things. So uh, scientists classify living things into uh, groups of organisms based on their similarities. So uh, we're going to look at the phylogenetic tree of life, which means the phylogen phylogeny refers to evolutionary relationship of different organisms. So life has been divided into three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. And you can match the color of the letters with the part of the phylogenic tree in which these domains occupy. So at very early during evolutionary uh, history of life, there was a common ancestor after from which um, all lives of li all types of life were formed. So from this ancestors, two branches um, took off. One branch became the bacterial domain. Then on the other branch, we have the archaea domain and the eukarya domain. In case you're wondering where you are on this tree, you're here. We're animals. Now, originally, the bacteria and archaea domains were grouped together as prokaryotes because they are single cell organisms that just by looking at them under the microscope look very similar. But then over time, as scientists started sequencing the DNA of the archaea and looked at the organization of their molecules, they realized that actually these archaea, although they look similar to bacteria, they're actually more closely related to eukarya. So therefore, the bacteria and archaea are totally different kinds of organisms in, their, in terms of their evolutionary history and uh, the way they work. So these are not grouped together anymore. So the bacteria and archaea used to all be grouped together and thought to be very similar. Even though collectively you can call them prokaryotes, but uh, you have to know that bacteria and archaea are very different and archaea are very, very much similar, more similar to eukarya when you look at them at a molecular level than they are uh, in bacteria. So again, these are called the three domains of life. And then within each domain, there's what's called kingdoms. So we are part of the animal kingdom. Okay, so as I mentioned, cells are basic units of life. And collectively, we call bacteria and archaea prokaryotes because they're much simpler than eukaryotes. Um, now, all cells contain a number of 
different things. They all have a barrier called the cell membrane with bacteria. You can see this black line in here. They all have a cell membrane, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. They all have um, genetic material, both have. And they also have these little things which you'll be introduced to um, later on is uh, what we call ribosomes. They also have this soup in here, which is called cytoplasm. Now, for now, don't worry too much about this. Just know that eukaryotic cells are much more complex compared to bacteria and archaea. Uh, bacteria and archaea are much simpler, and eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles. There's a lot more going on in eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are also much larger. Nevertheless, there are some things that all cells have in common, which we're going to talk about when we talk about the cell unit. So again, the three domains of life are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. They are examples of them. So in this case, A, we're looking at a bacterial cell belonging to the domain bacteria. And B, these are extermophiles. Now, archaea tend to uh, live in really, really harsh conditions. So these are organisms that uh, live in hot springs. Um, this is an environment that, in which most organisms would not survive. It's really hot in here, but archaea cells uh, tend to survive in here. Then we are looking at a plant and uh, a lion, both of which are organisms that are in the eukaryotic domain. So here's a question that you can answer and come to discussion to see if you got it right. And, and here's another one. It's giving you descriptions of a particular organism and it's asking you to decide which one it is. And then um, there's another question about what we just discussed.